It's Saturday night, day 34 of quarantine. My mornings are filled scrolling through TikTok, then Instagram, then Reddit. My afternoon, spent wallowing in despair of the past four hours, I'll never get back. It's my nights that I look most forward to because it's when I can remind myself I haven't been a complete sloth. Because while I was scrolling, my gluten was being developed. The gluten network in my no-need pizza dough, that is. You see, my dough and I needed time apart so we could come together. In the form of pizza. Crispy, chewy, and golden brown. This is what keeps me going. Melodramatic pizza interlude aside, my name's Ethan, and today we're making no-need sheet pan pizza. Though not quite as Instagrammable as something like a Naples-style pizza, this sheet pan pizza, in my humble opinion, is probably the best way to start making pizza at home. You mix the ingredients, let the dough rest for 6 to 24 hours, add oil to a 9 by 13 baking pan, stretch the dough out, add your toppings, bake on high heat, and voila. The pan gives you a perfectly crisp crust. For those of you who are familiar, it's the same ideology behind Detroit style pizza. First, I'll show you guys how to make the dough, and then we'll make a very simple pizza sauce to go along with it. Both recipes will be linked in the video description below. Let's go. I start by heating 300 grams of water to 100 to 115 degrees in the microwave. Add eight grams of yeast, and this is the ideal temperature for instant yeast to activate. Additionally, add a spoonful of flour and mix it until it's combined. What we are doing here is proofing the yeast, or simply put, testing if the yeast is alive. After five to 10 minutes, a foamy surface should rise. If your yeast was recently bought, you probably don't need to bother with this step, but I like to check just in case. Meanwhile, add 400 grams of all-purpose or bread flour to a large mixing bowl. Add in eight grams of salt, and now you're gonna pour in the proofed yeast. Begin working the dough with your hands until no dry flour remains and a shaggy dough has formed. Once it's looking like this, pour in eight grams of olive oil into the dough and continue working until that oil is completely absorbed. Now, this is a high hydration dough at 75%, so it's going to be wet and sticky. But because of this high hydration, the dough ferments easier and can build gluten without any kneading. How, you may ask? Well, gluten development is caused by the hydration of flour. That's it. All that kneading does is speed up the hydration of flour by distributing the ingredients throughout the dough. From my sandwich bread video, we saw that the stages of gluten development and at the end of our test was looking for a gluten window. However, if we don't want to knead, this means that we need to give our flour more time to hydrate. Now, since this is a 75% hydration dough, it's fairly high, meaning the ingredients will move more freely while at rest and less time is required than say something like a 60% hydration dough if you're using the same process. I suggest letting the dough rest for at least six hours or up to a full 24. While the gluten is developing, let's make some sauce. For my sauce, I like to keep things simple. There's nothing simpler than Marcella Hazan's three ingredient red sauce, which I've showcased on the channel before. To make this sauce into a more pizza-esque one though, I like to substitute half the butter for olive oil, add some garlic and a pinch of oregano to the mix. Let's do this. Set a skillet over medium heat and add the olive oil and butter. Once melted, toss in the tomatoes, onion, garlic cloves, oregano, and a pinch of salt. Stirring occasionally, let the sauce simmer until it is reduced and thickened, which is probably gonna take 30 to 40 minutes in a shallow pan like this. Once reduced, give the sauce a taste and add salt and sugar as needed. This one was feeling a little bit acidic for me, so I added in a little bit of sugar and added a little bit more salt. Transfer this sauce to a container, and there you have pizza sauce, ready at a moment's notice. This sauce will store in the fridge for one to two weeks and it also makes a perfect baked ziti. But let's get back to our pizza dough. After eight hours, the dough should look something like this. Well risen, but not necessarily looking like a dough ball yet. Add in a drizzle of olive oil and start working this into a ball with your hands. And now we can toss it into our baking pan. I like using one that is 13 by nine. Drizzle a healthy amount of olive oil into the pan and you're gonna add in the dough, cover both sides in oil and spread it out to the edges of the pan as much as you can without it squishing back. And now we're going to let this proof for about 60 to 90 minutes until the dough has relaxed towards the edges of the pan. After relaxing, use your fingers to work the dough to the edges of the pan and pop any really large air bubbles if there is any. Now it's time for the toppings. 
Feel free to choose your toppings du jour. I'm a sucker for spicy pizza, so I chopped some Calabrian chilies up, and I also saved the garlic from our pizza sauce and gave that a rough chop as well. To round that out, I have Italian sausage, low moisture mozzarella cheese, the sauce, and some Parmesan that I'm gonna shave on top after it's done. Add the red sauce all the way to the edge of the pan. That's gonna help give you those little crispy edges that are kind of signature of Detroit style pizza. Now I'm gonna to toss on that garlic and add a generous helping on that low moisture mozzarella. Again, putting it all the way to the edges so we get those little crispy bits. Finally, I finish this laying out the Italian sausage and the Calabrian chilies. Now, I should have mentioned earlier, you want to set your oven to the highest temperature it will go for crispier edges and an airy crumb. For me, this is 550 degrees, but most ovens should do at least 500, and 500 works perfect. I've done it many times before. Pop the pizza in the oven and bake for about 20 minutes until the cheese is bubbly and the bottom is golden brown and crispy. You can check it by lifting with a spatula. Turn the pizza out onto your cutting board and add a sprinkle of that fresh parm and slice in. Or if you're like me, you can forget about the parm and just slice in because you're really excited and then add the parm in back. Wait until it's cool enough just to take a bite and this is that pizza that we're looking for. It's perfectly crispy with an open fluffy crumb while getting that nice crunch. And I know it doesn't look like the sexiest pizza out there, but it is by far one of the most flavorful. Full recipe is going to be linked on my website um, in the description below so you guys can follow along completely to a T. Hopefully you guys make this one, like I said, one of my absolute favorite ways to enjoy pizza. I mean, it's kind of like halfway in between deep dish and thin crust, kind of like the best of both worlds. You can combine any toppings out there and my oh my, it's delicious. That's gonna wrap it up for me. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.